I've got remote controls from a TV, receiver, cable box, Apple TV, fan, light bulbs, Blu-ray player, CD player, I actually do have a CD player, and a universal remote that doesn't even work with all of them. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Hola, remote controllers. Trace here. This is D News. What's up? When you're sitting on your couch and you grab the remote, the channel changer, the clicker, whatever you call it, you're harnessing the power of the electromagnetic spectrum to bend some technology to your whims. In 1898, Nikola Tesla filed a patent for a remote-controlled boat and even presented it to the public at Madison Square Garden. During World War I, radio frequencies were used to guide German vessels to crash into Allied ones. And by the Second World War, they were used to blow up mines from afar. But those were RF remotes. Chances are the ones that you interact with in your living room, those are IR remotes. They're similar, but different. You can tell the difference just by looking at them. For example, RF has an antenna, whereas IR has that shiny little window on the front so light can escape. Behind that window are low-energy light-emitting diodes, or LEDs. When you push the button, the LEDs light up in a Morse code-like pattern at a specific wavelength of about 950 nanometers. This tells the TV or receiver or whatever to do something specific. The light is infrared, which is why you can't see it. It's below our field of vision. It's very low energy. Over a short distance of about 30 feet, the electronics can detect those photons no problem. Nicer remotes even have more than one LED to ensure the code arrives properly. The code it's sending, by the way, is in binary, something like 0010101, which is the Sony command for power on. Surrounding that signal is a binary command for start and end, and of course, a few digits for the device code itself, which is why a simple TV remote won't control your record player and dim the lights and turn on the fireplace right out of the box. Yeah, all those things, what can I say? I'm a tiger. For all those other things, you'd need a universal remote, which comes with the codes for dozens of different products collected from manufacturers from around the globe. By telling the remote which things it should control, it knows to flash signals at that device, which can then hopefully decode them. But there's a problem here, and you maybe unknowingly experienced it. Infrared requires line of sight to work and is subject to lots of interference because infrared is emitted by sunlight, fluorescent light bulbs, and even human bodies. To avoid that, there are also RF remotes, and they work pretty much the same way as IR. They transmit a code and so on, but over a radio wave rather than a light beam. When you hit the button, a code is transmitted to a device, but because RF can contain more information, it also works two ways and over longer distances of up to 150 feet. And they can send information about the remote, confirm the transmission was successful. It's basically like a walkie-talkie for your electronics. And if that weren't enough, with the Internet of Things, there are even remotes that work over the Internet, like for Wi-Fi light bulbs. Your phone sends a signal to your Internet provider to a server somewhere in the world, which goes to another server somewhere else, which sends a message back to the light bulb via your Internet provider at your house all just to dim them to a more romantic level. Ironically, the signal probably travels hundreds or thousands of miles to make your lights dim across the room, whereas in the 50s, the TV thing just went five feet. The world's a complicated place. Radio waves can actually do a lot around your house, like wireless charging. Imagine a world where your phone could charge in your pocket just because you were in your home. I explore how that works in this super old video. The battery creates a stable electromagnet because it's direct current. It's going one way. The power from your walls is alternating current. That changes direction 60 times a second, or it cycles at 60 hertz. So the electrons are moving back and forth. Remember that because that's the key to wireless charging. What do you wish you could control with a remote that you can't? And no fair saying me or some other animal. Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get more D News. I'll see you next time.